Hi guys, we take your Blueberry Hill, so continuation of door installation. Here's the the last door going in, well, the last entry door uh, from the garage to the house. Uh, basically just shim the door, typical thing, uh, level it out, um, and then uh, install the door. Um, I pre-drill the hinges, etc., and then Angie and I uh, stuffed the door in place. It was pretty heavy, so it took us a little bit to, to get it in here. You'll see us kind of trying to manage it uh, in a few seconds here. But once we got, the, we got the frame in, Angie and I put it up. Um, it took us a little bit. Um, because it, it is heavy again I, I don't know what it weighs but i'm sure it's 150 pounds ish um so it's it's quite heavy so here you see us uh putting the door up it, it's uh i raised the door off the ground about a quarter inch a little over a quarter inch because the threshold is quarter inch thick um i'm still waiting for those um i'm making this video on the 16th uh, sorry 18th um and i did get the threshold so i'll be installing those in a little bit i'll videotape that as well but uh here we are trying to get this thing so we can get the hinges started um, and uh, we're trying to shimmy it up uh, just so we can get it get one or two screws in the hinge and then uh, continue with the rest of the hinges so it was pretty heavy <laughs> and it took us a little bit so after we got the uh, the door started with the hinges we just put two screws in each hinge to have the door stay up uh, and then I moved over to making some pony walls for the uh, the bathrooms uh, the, the apartment the spare bedroom area gets a uh, one little pony wall between the toilet and the shower uh, both the master and that shower have a uh, the department have a walk-in shower uh, no no doors no glass no nothing so it'll just be a freestanding shower uh, we would really like those because they're easy they're easy to clean etc but anyway the pony wall is normal two by four framing uh, square up the outside two bys and then just nail the, the center points in place uh, all of them are same height I believe I made them all 42 inches high and that's just so we can have kind of a shelf area um, we can put stuff on, etc., and uh, it kind of uh, keeps the water sort of in check. But uh, from our past experience, the shower, freestanding shower, walk-in shower is not a big deal, so it should work pretty good. So you're seeing me using the uh, the Ramjet uh, 22 caliber uh, nail gun. Uh, worked pretty good. Um, I'm putting extra uh, nails in the these freestanding, well, the pony walls, uh, just so they uh, stay much more secure. They're three inch nails, uh, I'm using the higher caliber yellow uh, cartridge, so it shoots them in pretty good. And I put basically two, two of those nails at each stud area, so that, that should keep things pretty in check. So on March 9th I uh, started doing the hardware on the doors, uh, basically got about a UL jig to make sure I do the, put all the holes and stuff in the right place. I used a 70 millimeter offset from the side of the door and then centered the striker uh, plates etc on the, on the door as well. Uh, the jig made that pretty easy so you couldn't make a mistake um, i did put the template on there you saw me pull it off uh, just to make sure everything lined up and then of course you do the uh, recesses for the strikers and the plates by hand with a uh, chisel about a, they say eighth of an inch so i did that pretty much that way so here i'm doing the uh, recesses for the, the striker plate on the frame um, I drilled the hole first, then I notched it out, and then I started chiseling the rest of it so I could recess the thing, the, the plate inside the, uh, the frame. Uh, it tur turned out to be easier just doing the chisel work first and then drilling the hole. Um, that way everything was, the, came, the wood came out just nice and flat. Um, and then in some cases I actually used uh, an air, air tool to make it nice and nice and flat instead of having any kind of chisel mark. Hi guys, we got here at Blueberry Hill, so here we are, this is uh, March 9th. Uh, I spent the day basically... Uh, putting up one extra pony wall in the apartment bathroom um, and one extra one in the master bath uh, for the toilet area. Uh, Derek came over, Derek Penner, he's doing our cabinets. He came over this morning to measure everything up um, and he's gonna start working on stuff, uh, the plans, and then uh, we'll get the finishes and all that approved and with the misses, of course. But here's the bathroom right now, the master bath. So you walk in, little pony, what I call these pony walls, I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway, that's just so you, know, you have to switch here and then you have access to the, to the shower area this way. There'll be a little ridge, I'm gonna make that a concrete that's roughly an inch and a half up and then slope towards the drain. Um, I also changed out the uh, corner balance valves. They actually blew up. We had that what, one or two day of freeze um, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and they blew up the, uh, they put a crack across the valve. So I, I called corner. And they actually shipped two new ones to us, which is great, but I'm kind of scared about it now if it has a small freeze. Not this year, next year. You know, here's a toilet uh, pony wall. Cabinets going here, of course. Two mirrors. Um, there might be some floating shelves over, over the toilet area or whatever, we'll see. But uh, these shelves, we like these because we're gonna actually make little wider 
um, overhangs, maybe by an inch or something. And that'll be for plants and stuff like that. Just kind of dress it up a little bit. Anyway, that's the master bath. You saw me earlier putting a uh, time lapse, making the holes for this. Um, this is my first time doing this. Um, we ended up getting very modern, uh, very heavy duty uh, door pulls. There'll be a deadbolt here in a second. I'm gonna do that next. But uh, they work, they feel really good. They're a matte black finish. I'm kind of scared to have them on right now. I'm gonna probably put tape on them so when people don't dig them up. Um, as long as you follow the measurements, everything kind of comes out. You saw me doing that and then of course the striker. I've got little tiny screws in here for now. Of course, they're gonna be gigantic ones once we're, we're committed. Um, and we're ready for, uh, they're probably like four, four or five inch because we have double two by sixes behind here in case somebody wants to kick this in. So uh, the screws are probably gonna go all the way through. So that's what, that's six inches roughly, five inches uh, screw. And uh, that should be pretty good, plus the deadbolt. Anyway, it went in pretty good. I was trying to be nice, I was trying to be nice and uh, nice and tight with everything. And boy, it feels nice. I don't have all the screws in the hinges yet. I'm waiting on longer screws. Everything seems to be an inch. Don't know why. But anyway, everything opens up real nice. This has a lock on it, a keyed, and then a deadbolt with the same key. And I'm gonna be doing that next. So you'll see that in a time lapse. Um, what's coming up next on the agenda, I'm gonna continue doing the other two doors, the entry door and the side door, just put, putting the uh, handles on them. Uh, just so they can close positively and i'm still waiting on the, the threshold and the weather seal for it that goes around the frame again i don't know when it's coming <laughs> so uh, whatever whatever uh later on this week we're going to switch over doing uh, shower pans um i have the pvc liners that you came in yesterday um, along with all the hardware for the doors and including our the, the handles for the door entry door the doors on the inside of the house um, we don't need them right away, but we've got everything in bulk, so why not? Anyway, uh, lo and behold, a lot of stuff comes from Amazon because they can. We can't find some of this stuff locally, um, and we'd rather not go to the cheap side. Uh, so we went to, with the German brand uh, for the handles, and they feel nice and solid. They're heavy, um, so uh, no, none of the cheap stuff uh, that you can get for a buck and a half or whatever. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Um, switching over to time lapse again. I'm gonna do the dead bolt. A lot of fun. See ya. Forgot to mention my uh, new uh, little toy here. This is a Dewalt uh, door um, drill jig. It does the the key section and then, then the, the the handle holes. They seem to be kind of a standard size. And I went to the 70 millimeter depth, uh, which is um, pretty much everything on the German handles is in millimeters. Uh, I don't know how what that is in inches, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm on the deeper side, and then here, the, the door is almost two inches wide, so I've got it on that setting, and it seems to be truing everything up. Uh, fun going through uh, all that stuff. Killed a couple of batteries, but uh, it is what it is. Anyway, on to the deadbolt. So moving on to the deadbolt. Uh, I already did the deadbolt holes in the door. Uh, now I'm doing the striker plate on the uh, deadbolt plate on the frame. And then in a second, you'll see the basically the doors lock and it works. Yay! So the entry door is a little bit different. You can see the template's uh, different. It has a handle that uh, is pulled, uh, it's a little more ornate. Uh, very simple. We did a modern kind of touch on it. You'll see it in a second here once I get the holes done. But it requires a one bolt hole near the bottom of the template um, and everything just lines up. It's kind of nice they, they provide those templates. Uh, and then you chisel out everything for the uh, striker plates and the, the plates themselves and then uh, put everything together. I had a little bit of trouble with this one. Um, the the, the deadbolt kept getting, uh, I'm not sure why I was doing it, but it was twisting uh, when I was installing it. I, I guess I didn't set it to the right side. So it would only, uh, the striker would only come up halfway. So that took me a few few attempts, but after figuring out what was going on, everything worked just fine. Um, I did have to adjust that bottom bolt hole. Uh, it walked on me a tiny bit, so made it nice and tight. and. Uh, there you go, you can see the kind of style we're going for. So while I was doing the door, uh, the guy from the Legacy uh, Garage Doors came by to install the, the, the LiftMaster Garage Door opener. It's a side mount. Uh, we didn't want anything to change and all that stuff in the middle of the ceiling, so the side mount was the, the right answer. It's a little more expensive, but it works real nice and it's quieter. Um, and it has a couple of cool features. Everything seems to be computer oriented nowadays, Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Um, so it's got a Wi-Fi light. 
so you can put that anywhere you want. It's also got uh, uh, an electronic solenoid that locks the door. Um, I don't quite show you the details of that, but that's that little box right in front of the blue box that, on this ladder. It's a little, little black box sitting at the, on the frame, and it's just a peg that comes out and locks the door up. Um, here he's doing the final touch-up and the wiring for the door itself. In a few seconds, you'll see the door go up and down. Yay! And we have a functional um, electrically controlled door. Fantastic. And it auto locks. Um, not sure I like that feature just yet, but uh, it has a multi So this is March 11th. Uh, I'm doing certain work on the, the pans for the showers. Uh, here's a, I believe it's an 8 inch or 10 inch. Uh, this is roof uh, metal uh, sheeting stuff. Um, and uh, basically you use it to, I'm putting a, a PVC liner in place. So this is going up on the wall so you can glue the PVC liner upwards. Uh, in the prior house we had, I did a fiberglass pan. Uh, it turned out to be probably a lot more expensive than what I'm doing here, uh, just cause. Um, but the metal's easy, you just basically screw it down and now the first layer of concrete goes down and uh, it it kind of kind of lines up, it's not quite flat but it, it does have a bit of teeny bit of slope. Um, and then the PVC liner goes on and then we do the final concrete with slope so that all the water goes into the drain and then we'll be using a, uh, a level for that. At this point I'm just using my kind of like the feel just sort of getting it half inch off the ground and the flanges uh, kind of made this this uh, occur they're about a quarter inch off the ground and uh, so I leveled out at, out at the flange for the the drain about a quarter inch and I moved outwards to the walls roughly about a half inch uh, we're doing our own mix here this is a uh, three to one sand to uh, cement Portland cement and uh, that seems to work pretty straightforward kind of a dry mix even though it looks kind of wet it is uh, mostly dry so it kind of stands up easily um, and it you can pat it down and, and manage it that becomes more important with the second layer oh uh, here Jake showed up so that was great uh, we kind of banged out the, uh, the spare bedroom shower and then the middle shower you'll see in a few seconds here so the middle shower is basically a wedge uh, kind of a pipe pie shape um, it's not a very big shower by any means um, and here you see me put some water down before I put concrete uh, on it just that's just so that the water doesn't get sucked out uh, from the the wet mix into the, the dry concrete um, it helps a little bit anyway uh, pretty straightforward Jake was helping me there um, this took us like no time at all um, and uh, this is again the first step uh, we're gonna leave this alone and do the the master bathroom the next day or day after that depending on what the weather was doing So this wedge, it's basically, uh, I used a, a measuring tape to see the little, you see the black line on the ground, um, and I kind of freehand the edge, um, and then we basically quit um, at this point, let this dry, um, and come back, uh, I, th I believe we do the, the master bathroom first, uh, first layer, and then we come back and do the, the pans, the PVC pan later. I was trying to do a, you see me doing a little ledge there, and I gave that up, um, kind of made it flat at that point, and we're probably going to put a little metal flange on there so it can use magnetic it'll be it'll have a curtain shower curtain on this particular shower just not enough room to make a glass shower or anything like that um, plus the glass glass showers are specific curves etc so we're going to probably do a shower curtain here so here we switch gears and uh, after we did those that middle shower pan we started building a overhand overhang uh, roof panels. These are obviously panels that we ripped out of the uh, containers. I kind of like the blue look. Uh, we're going to put this one on the side uh, door in the living room area and basically just cutting a three inch uh, larger than the frame that's on the overhang that you might have saw us put on uh, early, uh, probably a couple weeks ago. Anyway, this is just going to get screwed down to that frame. Um, it has a little bow in it, so I'll see if I can get that bow out of it. But overall, uh, pretty simple. We're going to use a tractor in a minute to put it up, and uh, you'll see that in a second. So here, Jake's going to cut the uh, the one that goes up on the deck, second floor. Uh, we we cut it, but we don't put it up. Uh, you can see that the wind's kind of it's pretty serious up there. So, um, and here I'm doing a little recess for uh, the container frames, the way they're put together right here. Uh, right, you see right by the door you have a little frame section. So I got the tractor for this one, so it made it a lot easier. You basically just shove it on the uh, frame, use some uh, self-tapping screws and uh, drill it down and we're good to go. Easy peasy on this one. Uh, the one on the deck's going to be more fun. It's not super heavy, but um, it, was, it was windy enough where we didn't do it this day. 
Um, so we'll see if we can get it do it in a couple days here. So March 12th here I am doing the, uh, the master shower pan. Uh, same process as the other two bathrooms. You put the metal up on the sides so the PVC will have something to glue to. Uh, and then Angie and I put the uh, first layer of concrete down and then we call it good for, for the day. Uh, we'll wait for that to dry and then come back a day or two later to uh, finish finish the liners. And they're, they're, you'll see that. They're uh, kind of easy to do. Uh, basically, I did have to let them uh, warm up in the sun though because the, uh, the PVC itself, it was like 40 something degrees in the mornings last few days. Um, so when I opened up the, the packages, the, re the creases um, in the package wouldn't go away until it warmed up. So anyway, pretty easy peasy. Uh, this, this concrete's pretty cool. It's the same thing, you know, 3 1 ratio. And just helped me put it down. Um, and it's kind of a, a, a drier mix than normal. It, it's not a flow uh, version. And this is so that we can get to, when you get to edges, edges it won't flow out. Uh, it, it stays pretty put. Um, not a big deal. So the last few uh, travels on it and we're done for the day with this and then we wait for the uh, rest to set up and uh, you'll see us see you in the next video it'll show you the putting the, the liner down and uh, making sure it's uh, angles into the drain etc hey guys we take your blueberry hill so you just saw Angie and myself put down the uh, master bedroom bath rather this is the base for the liner that we're putting in. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, um, there's a slight slope. I'm doing it by feel, not really measuring yet. We're gonna put a, a PVC liner in it tomorrow. After this dries, of course, and it'll slope into the drain. And then we do our beveled, your, our angled water slope to the drain from the corners of all the walls. And then we'll start being a little more careful on uh, how we make that happen. Use the level, of course. Anyway, that was about it. Uh, I'm doing a three to one mix. You know, one cement, three sand. And uh, I'm gonna show you how the other ones came out. They came out pretty good. Nothing nothing fancy, they're still drying. Uh, we're, we're experiencing, sorry, sorry for the video. Uh, we're experiencing some funny weather. Um, it's gonna be cold again this evening. Uh, but regardless, it's warm enough to do the concrete. I think it's not hitting zero for very long, just a very short, short span, so. These are the base, the basis for the liner, and you can see the liner, PVC liner right there, it's an OTE, um, PVC liner, and we'll put, be putting that in. We might actually, uh, I don't know if I want to put it in today, I'll probably do it tomorrow because it's still drying over here, and that we, that we did yesterday, right, with Jake, and uh, there you can actually feel a little bit of slope that's in it right now going to the drain, so that's going to be helpful when we do the, the liner and then we do the final slope. Anyway, we're coming along. Um, that's our last kind of construction thing before whatever else we have to do. <laughs> but anyway, it's coming along. We'll talk at you later. Well, so today was kind of a goofy day. I uh, actually took the uh, the ram for the first time towing. Took it to Home Depot to get some uh, concrete, uh, get two pallets of uh, quick read for the sidewalk. We'll be doing that probably, um, probably early next week. So I got two pallets of that and uh, Kind of noticed that the uh, trailer was kind of shimmy shammy, a little bit of a shake. I was doing that with the Tundra as well, but anyway, I finally took a look at it after I unloaded the concrete. It took me an hour because I had to do it by hand in the tractor, and the tractor's not strong enough. I wish I had the Bobcat, but I don't want to drive, drive in the shop with the, the traction stuff. But uh, regardless of that, I had to take the wheels off, look at the bearings, and all the bearings were very, very loose, and uh, cleaned that all out. And then I found two bad tires, so I had to order. Uh, new set of tires for that trailer and off we go so more maintenance <laughs>